This is Zorgodowski of WeAreChange.org, and I'm joined by the one and only James Corbett of the Corbett Report. Now, James is, a, is an acclaimed researcher. His work is phenomenal. He's doing really excellent, deep analysis about what's really happening in this world. And we're going to take this opportunity to talk to James about ISIS. There's a lot of news. There's a lot of information breaking with ISIS. But I think it's very important to understand the start of ISIS and how it became so prominent, not only in our mainstream propaganda media, uh, fear-mongering everybody, but also its current effects that it has on our entire foreign policy and the Middle East. James, first question, the start of ISIS. How did this happen? Well, it's important, as you say, to understand the start because most people or more people are understanding that it's now being funded and openly supported by the same coalition that's apparently trying to destroy it, quote unquote. But back in 1999, the actual date is uh, obviously a bit shady, but somewhere around there, Abu Musab al-Zarqawi started this off. He was a Jordanian who ended up in Iraq eventually, and uh, his organization that he started in 1999 became Al-Qaeda in Iraq. Al-Qaeda in Iraq eventually morphed into what we now know as ISIS. But we have to understand that this has been a PSYOP since before ISIS was even ISIS. And that's not even what I'm saying. That's actually admitted from even Pentagon documents. So we go back to uh, Al-Qaeda in Iraq. Abu Musab al-Zarqawi is one of these mythical figures, terrorist figures, who ends up uh, dying multiple times. I've got some of the notes here. So in uh, 2003, uh, he, he starts uh, the group. He was killed in a bombing raid in April 2003, uh, arrested in Fallujah in 2004, arrested in Bakuba in January 2005, uh, killed again in 2006, apparently for good. Um, but before he was killed off, the Washington Post, uh, Post reported on internal military docu documents proving that the Pentagon was engaged in a propaganda campaign specifically to play up Zarqawi and the role of AQI. Uh, as all part of a PSYOP, uh, the, the actual quote from General Mark Kimmett, the Zarqawi PSYOP program is the most successful campaign to date. Uh, they leaked a letter uh, purportedly written by Zarqawi uh, that was picked up by the New York Times, even though the fact, uh, the, the, even the, the question of whether he wrote the letter at all or not is, uh, still, was still in question. Anyway, he was eventually killed off for the third or fourth time in 2006, and the group was taken over by Abu Omar al-Baghdadi, Baghdadi goes on to have a very similar career, um, being killed in 2007, uh, being uh, arrested multiple times. Um, uh, uh, interestingly enough, the U.S. military claimed he never existed, um, citing information from a detainee that they had who was saying that Zarqawi was basically a mythical figure that had been invented. They, they employed an actor to uh, play the voice of this guy in various audio recordings to give it an Iraqi voice to what is essentially a foreign group. Um, so, and that was, that was, the U.S. military was, was talking about that back in 2007. Eventually, he, uh, he gets arrested and uh, is killed off in 2010. From that point, the group was taken over by its current leader, uh, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. And he, again, has this myth mythical background. No one knows for sure, but there's some unverifiable internet biography basically saying that he was a, a PhD in Islamic studies at the Islamic University of Baghdad. And somehow or other, he became uh, the, the leader of ISIS. Basically, his mythology is that he was rounded up and arrested, uh, put at Camp Bukha in 2004. Uh, according officially to the Pentagon, he was uh, only arrested for about nine months, 11 or 10 months. But according to the person who was actually running the camp at the time, Army, Cur Army Colonel Kenneth King, uh, he says that he was there until, the, until at least the time when America handed Camp Bukha back over to the Iraqi government in 2009. And he says specifically that this guy was one of the guys who said, uh, we're, coming, uh, we're coming to New York or we're coming for the towers or we're coming to get you or something like that. So. Even the, their own uh, army colonel who was in charge of the camp disputes the Pentagon's official story of how long this guy was in prison. So it's another shady character. Only a few photographs of him exist. And now we're being asked to believe that he's overseeing this organization, which somehow or other spontaneously, apparently, sprang up from a, what seemed to be a rather limited group into this monstrous, almost uh, sort of semi-state actor that's now spreading over the entire region. Somehow, according to the, I guess what we are officially expected to believe, without the active military and financial aid that would have been necessary to accomplish that. Pinpoint information, always dead on and accurate, very important. But let's not also forget the foreign policy. Uh, when the U.S. took over Iraq, General McChrystal made sure that no Baptists were allowed to even serve in the Iraqi military. The Iraqi military was conserved primarily of Baptists. 
And uh, a lot of those soldiers went and joined ISIS, even though that they weren't radicalized in any way, shape, or form, but they now had a new kind of mission that they undertook. There's Libya, where we supposedly were supposed to help spread democracy against the dictator Gaddafi, which was our enemy with foreign policy, with everything that he was doing uh, behind the scenes. How do you think U.S. foreign policy um, affected the growth of ISIS, including the U.S. allies in the region, who openly help ISIS become what they are right now? Well, that's right. It's not just the U.S. It's uh, not even just NATO. It's NATO-Israeli foreign policy that is completely all over this. Uh, and, and the Gulf region as well has a huge part to play in all of this. All of these are absolutely essential in understanding this because it's important, important to understand there are two levels on which this is happening. There are the foot soldiers of this that are that are the Ba'athists, for example, or other people who are drawn to this for whatever religious or political reasons, who are genuinely fighting. And, and that on obviously confuses a lot of people, even in the alternative media, who thinks that this is all just a figment of the imagination. No, there are real foot soldiers that are really believe in you know, whatever cause they think they believe in. But this would not be possible without the organizational infrastructure and the, and the financial backing and the military protection that has been needed to accomplish this. The big convoys of Toy Toyotas streaming across the border from Syria to Iraq last summer, as if that would have been possible in any universe in which the CIA or any organization like that was doing its job, its bare uh, basic job of what they tell us they're supposed to be there to do, which is to obviously disrupt things like that from happening or stop them from happening. They're not. They are protecting them on financial, military, and other types of levels. Yep. And that is the only way this organization has become what it is. Yep. And that's why they haven't attacked Israel yet. Israel is giving uh, health care to ISIS fighters when they're coming over their borders. They're bombing Assad troops who are fighting ISIS. And the whole region, including Saudi Arabia, which I think is also one of the most important ones, uh, openly has connections and a large sum of money is coming from Saudi Arabia to ISIS and I think that's one of the main reasons I'm speculating now uh, why the 28 pages of the not 11 Commission report have not yet been released because we talked to the congressmen who were able to see it secretly they cannot talk about it is still a classified document 28 pages of the not 11 Commission report detail foreign state funding and the congressmen who were able to see it point the finger at Saudi Arabia. They cannot officially say it, but all evidence points to Saudi Arabia financing 9-11. Now we know for a fact they're also sending a large ton of money towards ISIS. Uh, but going off on a very another important point, the CIA admitted before that they could make fake videos. Uh, they did this with Osama bin Laden drinking beer with a little boy. They never released the video, but they were uh, making videos and thinking about releasing that openly, it's admitted. Those new ISIS videos, they're extremely slick, extremely highly produced. Do you believe that they are real or are they fake? Uh, there's no doubt that they have been manipulated. There's no doubt about that. The only question is by whom and for what purpose. Um, if you look at, for example, the Japanese hostages, you have uh, the, the two men kneeling down in front of the jihadi, whatever, John or George or whatever they're going with now. And uh, the shadows on one uh, is falling on the left side, the shadow on the other is falling on the right side. That can o is only possible in a universe with two suns or a universe uh, where they're in front of a green screen. That's your only option. So these m images have been manipulated 100%. Uh, and so the only question then is, could this possibly be a, a manipulation that's taking place uh, by the actual group that, that we are expected to believe ISIS is, or does it have to be with some sort of CIA backing or whatever? I think it's certainly possible that some whatever group this Islamic State could have could simply be doing this in front of a green screen because they don't want to be caught. So I don't think it's conclusive either way. But obviously, I believe that this organization wouldn't exist without the financial and military backing of the CIA, which is the larger issue, I think, behind all of this. So yes, the images are manipulated. By whom and for what purpose, at this point, speculation. Now, we know you've done a lot of research when it comes to 9-11. A lot of the things that we're talking about seem to be repeating themselves like they did with 9-11. Um, if not 11 truth would have came out, I truly believe ISIS would not be possible uh, in, in today's day and age. Um, but from the lessons of 9-11, um, right after that horrible day, the U.S. government said that this is going to be something that we're going to be fighting for the next 100 years. And of course, we need conflicts to divide and conquer people. They want the military industrial complex to grow. They want to restrict your freedom. Problem, reaction, solution, that is their ultimate end game. I believe ISIS is just a continuation, the new boogeyman, the new Al-Qaeda. And I believe this conflict is going to spread for, again, 
the hundred years unless we expose it for what it really is, do our research, do our homework like James is. That's my personal take on it, my personal opinion on it. James, what is your personal opinion about the end game of ISIS? Well, I think you're exactly right. It's just the new boogeyman. It is Al-Qaeda version 2.0. Um, obviously, the original Al-Qaeda narrative ran out in May 2010 with the death of Osama bin Laden. It kind of gave the uh, got away, or the supposed death of Osama bin Laden. Obviously took the energy and the wind out of the sails of that uh, Al-Qaeda narrative. So uh, this is just the new boogeyman to replace the old boogeyman, and it's related to the old boogeyman. Al-Qaeda in Iraq, uh, you know, basically became ISIS. So uh, yes, it's just more continuation of the same, and it's part of the same narrative that's being used for the same purpose that have we've seen since, and even before 9-11, but especially since 9-11. It has to be confronted in the same way and completely dismantled in the same way that the 9-11 myth has been for anyone who's been interested in researching the details. And you're exactly right that things like the Saudi Arabia financing and manipulations behind the scenes of 9-11 that's hidden in the 28 pages is a window into how this works because that, of course, relates to the testimony of Michael Springman, who's, of course, talked about how he was in the uh, consulate that was giving visas to terrorists back in the 80s, the exact same consulate that ended up giving uh, visas to many of the 9-11 hijackers. Uh, again, Saudi financing of 9-11 couldn't have happened without CIA active participation, involvement, coddling, manipulation, all of it. So again, all, all things point back to the fact that this is one big orchestrated hoax that's going on right now to make us, con to convince us that somehow this enemy is rising and there's nothing we can do about it. Uh, it's all just uh, a hoax and manipulation. We have to expose it, completely go against this war agenda before it starts amping up because unfortunately 2016 looks like it's going to be another Republican president, more of the right wing, left wing, good cop, bad cop nonsense that uh, the public still believes in and it's just going to be a continuation of that war agenda unless we can derail it. Or Hillary Clinton, which is just as war hawkish as any Republican out there and continues that same kind of uh, covert because Obama is very covert about what he's doing. The Republicans are usually mo more overt in what they're doing. Uh, James, any last final comments and closing words regarding ISIS? No, I think that pretty much covers it all. And again, it's all about derailing the war agenda because we know that this is being done specifically to just further the, uh, the, the narrative that's going on that allows the, uh, the U.S. and its allies to keep rolling out over state after state. We've already had a million dead Iraqis. We don't need one more in the name of this phony boogeyman. James, thank you so much. Find out more about James in the link in the description below. His analysis and research is pinpoint dead on. Do your homework. Share this video with someone who is afraid of this ISIS threat, which of course is manipulated. Wake up, do your homework, do your research, and of course, go check out Corbett Report. Thank you again so much for watching.